All right. So, I got a response after, let's say, three days or so. I was wondering why it was taking a little long. Maybe they were trying to f come up with an answer. <clears throat> but get this. This is ridiculous. I mean, uh, technically, he really didn't answer my question. And he was just spewing a bunch of crap that I already know. Listen to this. Good afternoon. Long period seismometers and long period earthquakes, although very similar in name, have separate meanings when placed in context, even though I said nothing about earthquakes. Long period broadband sensors are specifically designed to detect a certain frequency range, most commonly about 0, 0 0.01 hertz to 0 0.1 hertz, even though on the graphs it says 0 0.5, which I, I gotta say, harmonic tremor only happens from 1 hertz to about 5 hertz. It'll never happen below 1 hertz. So it, it's probably not harmonic tremor that I detected, but still, it's something, because every graph picked it up. As period is the reciprocal of frequency by way of the equation period equals 1 slash f. This means waveforms with periods of 100 seconds to 10 seconds in the time domain. In contrast, short period instruments are designed to detect strong motion from nearby regional earthquakes. I'm not talking about earthquakes, dude. I'm talking about tremors. Long period earthquakes are specific events that are associated with volcanism. They do not display the characteristic P wave, S wave, coda of a typical crustal earthquake when there is a brittle failure, but a comparatively smoother waveform indicative of magma movement. Uh, duh. Long period events are strong indicators of possible eruptions. Thanks for the worry, bud. When they come, it becomes shallower and more frequent in the time domain. This is an older publication that touches on what these type of waveforms can look like. I already know what they look like, dude. On another note, although it's tempting to try and correlate a seismic event across multiple seismic stations hundreds of kilometers apart by simply examining data by eye, most of the time it is extremely difficult for any except the most experienced seismologist to identify a single common event, and waveforms must undergo robust time series analysis, cross-correlation, etc., to positively correlate that single event across multiple seismograms. Uh, what? <laughs> that said, it is quite possible that what you detected was a deep, teleseismic earthquake that was picked up on stations across the country. Okay, so he just said that what I saw was most likely a teleseismic earthquake that's very deep. Uh, hello, it was 34 hours long. When was the last time you saw an earthquake that was 34 hours long? Dude, it's a tremor. I don't even, I don't care what it is. It all, it picked up on over 60 stations. Is he meaning to tell me that if I didn't pick anything up, there's just over 60 coincidences in one day? Like, what? And here is my response that I just sent. I just sent this thing. Hello, this is in regards to your response today. You still never answered my question. I am not some Yellowstone nut who screams eruption every two hours. It does not matter how you spin this, and I know what the different channels and graphs are and what different waveforms look like. Again, I have been studying this stuff for over two years now, and anyone with the right knowledge can read seismograms, especially if they understand certain aspects of the monitors in question, such as sensitivity and site characteristics, which can slightly affect the graphs. No matter how you spin this, there is an obvious increase of quote-unquote background activity around 3 o'clock UTC, November 28, 2017, on over 60 graphs spanning from Alaska to Virginia on ANSS and graphs provided by Montana Tech. There was an obvious decrease in said quote-unquote background activity around 1300 UTC on November 29th, 2017. The fact, regardless of any circumstance, that each graph, mostly in the northern half of America, all showed synonymous timing for both the increase and decrease of the quote-unquote background activity is not normal. This is not about waveform characteristics, no matter what the waveform looked like. If the timing of the graph coincides with the next graph, especially when there are 60 graphs all confirming one another, then using the scientific method, which apparently I thought scientists are supposed to use, we must come to the conclusion that these events on each graph correlate with one single event. Duh! Hello? I mean, that's common sense, guys. Unless you were telling me that there were literally 60 coincidences on the same day. I just emailed multiple journalists and volcanologists, so we will see what responses I get from those in the field. Also, satellite imagery suggests a large SO2 emission coming from multiple possible epicenters of this event. Hey guys on YouTube, if you want to see the SO2 emissions, go down in the description box under resources and look for earth.nullschool.net. 
You can tell me what you wish, but the data speaks for itself. Humans are fallible, data is not, especially if you know how to read it. I do not care what you tell people or what you do, just know that I hope you're on top of this situation whether in secret or not. Thank you for your time. Just was hoping you were aware of this situation. And yes, it can be difficult when examining one-time events, you know, like an earthquake maybe, shorter than an hour or two, but the longer it goes on, say 34 hours long, which in definition, this was a long period tremor because it was a tremor and it was 34 hours long, which makes it a long period tremor. <laughs> Okay, but the longer it goes on, say 34 hours long, the easier it is to correlate between neighboring graphs. Again, this is not my first rodeo. And also, deep teleseismic quake events, like the one you just suggested, does not last 34 hours. Plus, I was leaning towards some strange, fast tectonic slip, but since your reply, I am now leaning towards some type of magmatic activity, which to me seems impossible. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Now, guys, the next video I'm going to upload is probably going to be of uh, an update on this because the tremor happened again, I believe it was last night, but it was very small. It still could get picked up on multiple graphs, but not all the way to Virginia, though. It, it, it still was quite large. But I'm going to upload a video about the SO2 emissions going on that I'm going to use the application earth.nullschool.net. Well, I just wanted to show you guys this BS reply that they sent me, and thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more updates. Oh, by the way, I emailed over 10 volcanologists today about this subject, so I will also upload a video when they reply, if they reply. So, hopefully, hopefully this is nothing, but that was a complete BS answer. And at the end, he even said, oh, it's possible that you picked up a teleseismic quake, dude. It's 34 hours long. I'm pretty sure he didn't realize that. Obviously, that shows he didn't even look into it. I mean, hello, they're taxpayer funded. We're paying them. I'm pretty sure that technically, if he thinks about it, I'm his boss because I'm paying his taxes. I mean, I'm paying his bills. Like, what? Oh, man. Hopefully, someday the USBS will actually get up off there, you know what, and actually do something because this is not normal. This activity is not normal. <laughs> Have a great day, guys, and God bless.